All right, guys, so I am in what is the laser room. It is also a storage room for firearms that come to the shop for transfer, um, where transfer means that it is bought um, from an out-of-state source. It is um, transferred from one federal firearms license holder to another, to here in the shop. And before it can be released to a buyer, to someone who is taking ownership of it, they must go through the proper background check and paperwork process. And legally, um, that firearm is the possession of basically the shop until that that person passes the necessary requirements. Um, there is something that has been sitting in the corner of this, this shelf system here for years, year, in this box right here. Um, and this is, I'm going to, you know, people have asked this um, on and off. What happens? What happens when somebody, if somebody, so if you can order, you can legally technically buy a gun on the internet, but that doesn't mean you, it just shows up at your house. That is not how it works. What happens if somebody buys a gun on the internet and then they can't legally take possession of it? Well, here's a story right here. This, and it's a very, very nice firearm. And I, I, before doing this, I want you to know that I made sure it was cleared and unloaded. So that we're, you know, because I knew I was going to have one hand to do this. This is a Remington Model 1911 .45 caliber handgun. This was bought by the groomsmen of a young man getting married. And if you can see the engraving there, in June 19, I'm sorry, 2018. That's how long this has been sitting here. It was purchased by the groomsmen as a present for the, the groom, which means that the groom taking possession of it has to be able to come in and pass the background check and has to be able to legally take possession of a firearm. Well, maybe they should have asked him. I mean, yes, it's a nice surprise. Maybe they should have asked him, are you legally able to own a firearm? Because he came in and could not pass the background check. He couldn't. He He knew. He knew he couldn't pass the background check. And he said, I, I can't I can't own a gun. Um, now, when people can't own a firearm, it's usually it's usually not something they want to brag about. So obviously he didn't tell anybody about that for whatever reason. Um, so he was unable to take possession of this of this gun. Now let's say that he didn't know. Let's say that let's say that he tried to do it anyway and the background check failed. So what would happen? Um, so first we would get a message saying that he was denied and saying, do not transfer. At that point, uh, a few things happen. Number one, we have to, we have to tell them you are not legally able to take possession of this firearm, which can result in some issues, uh, with the individual. Um, but that fires off a message to the state police and to the ATF saying somebody ineligible, somebody not legally able to um, take possession of a firearm is attempting to. And that starts um, a little investigation. And where it goes from there depends on the situation, but it does alert them that someone has attempted to. And listen, it doesn't always mean that the person is actually legally unable. We have had situations where um, somebody's name was, was the same as someone on the list. We've had situations where the system pinged someone else's social security number. Um, and, uh, we've had the, the situation where, uh, somebody had, let's say 20 years ago, a DUI and it was supposed to be expunged from their, right? This is a thing. And it's supposed to be expunged from their record. And somebody in the clerk's office didn't actually do it. And so it was still there 20, 25 years later, and they should have legally been able to purchase and own a firearm, but because somebody didn't fully follow through their job, it was still something on their record and they had to hire a lawyer and go through a whole process. And so at that point, when they're denied, we, because it's a personal issue, we, they don't give us a reason. They don't say, here's, here's why this person is a, this person's a white, this person is domestic, um, abuse person. This person committed a felony. This person, we simply get the message. They, they are not able to, to receive it. Uh, you cannot transfer the firearm to them. We then um, give them, if they request it, 
uh, challenge paperwork. If they feel like they there's no reason why, if they do not understand why they can't take possession, we can give them paperwork they can fill out and they have a certain amount of time to fill out that paperwork. And there's a phone number that they can call to find out what's going on. It's out of our hands. We have nothing to do with it. Now, the question then is what happens to that gun? Technically, in a legal, technical sense, this shop owns that gun because it's been transferred to us, FFL to FFL. We didn't pay for it, but in a, in a legal possession sense, we, the royal we, own that gun. We cannot give that gun to anybody who does not complete and pass a background check or um, the only other way is we can, we can transfer, transfer it to another federal firearms license holder. So that person who was attempting to buy it has a couple options. If they can return it and get their money back and through another transfer, you know, back to the seller through another FFL holder, maybe that's an option. Um, but we, like, this is where it gets a little awkward. So people will spend money, they'll buy the gun and then not be able to take possession of it. They're not, we don't have anything to do with the money. We're, we are a way station. Right, we are the we are the paperwork doers. We don't get any money in the transaction. That's not people pay us to do the transfer, and it's, we charge a lot less than most people do uh, for the transfer fee. From what I hear, <clears throat> um, it's a very small transfer fee. But we don't we don't have the money for buying the gun. That's between the buyer and the seller. So we can't we can't give the refund. So now we're in possession of the actual firearm like this one from 2018. Now, um, Darren tried to get in touch with the, the actual, the, the FFL that sent it here. He tried to get in touch with the, the people that actually made the purchase. Nobody there wanted to try to take possession of the gun. Could Did they know that they were not able to, to own it? I don't know. Do they just not want to have anything to do with it now? I, we don't know, but see, nobody was willing to legally take possession of this. So then the question is, now a new point is, well, so we sell it to somebody else. Well, that's a legal gray area. We don't own it. We own it. We possess it. Legally, we possess it, but we don't legally own it. So ethically and legally, can we just then say, all right, fuck it. We're going to sell it to somebody else. Can I mean, that's wrong. Other people do do that kind of stuff. We, we don't do that. We won't do that. This will be sitting on the shelf, logged in, in our bound book for... I don't know how many years. Uh, I mean, you know, um, and periodically we try to get in touch with the people involved. But this is what happens when somebody, because I know that I know the media wants to make it seem like, and I always say this, that anybody off the street can walk in and slam down a credit card or some cash and say, I want a gun and walk out. That's not how it works. It does not work like that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It is, it is a process and people are denied and these things happen. And you cannot just go on the internet and say, I'm buying this gun, click and have it show up at your doorstep. It doesn't work like that. And, and so sometimes the people with the, the fire, the federal firearms license, I just finished two transfers today. It's a process. It took up a good portion of my day working on the paperwork and making sure that these people were appropriately. Okay. Now I should also say that in order for the system to work, everybody needs to do their jobs. Um, what we've seen with some of the, the recent shootings is that there was plenty of reason for those people, those shooters to be denied those legal firearms purchases. People dropped the ball big time in the process. They should have been denied, but people did not like the guy in Highland park. People knew he was, he threatened to kill others. He threatened to kill himself multiple times. There's no way that he should had he should not have been flagged and he should not have ever passed a background check but people did not follow the steps it was too much work it was too much of a hassle they never should have passed a background check but he did because people didn't do the right thing um, but that's another video entirely this is simply to ask, answer the question what happens when someone what happens if somebody doesn't pass a background check when they try to buy a gun and that's what happens uh, very often the, the, tran the gun store or the transfer. If it's a gun store and they own the stock, no problem. They'll sell that gun to somebody else some other time. The person just, the person doesn't get to pay for the gun. If it's a gun store that owns the stock, 
they do the background check before the transaction goes. But what we do here, we're not really a gun store, um, but we do transfers FFL to FFL. And most of the time when that happens, that gun has already been bought and paid for. And that's a terrible time for somebody to figure out that they are not legally able to take possession of that firearm. So I hope this answers the question. I've been asked this a lot, so I figured I'd do a quick video on it. And, you know, we'll see what happens there. But So for the foreseeable future, this um, very nice Remington will continue to stay locked in storage here. Protected and um, unpossessed and unowned, so. All right, guys, I appreciate your questions, and I hope that uh, this is a, an answer that, you know, helps fill some people in, uh, fill in some knowledge gaps, and maybe is useful. So keep asking me questions, and if I can't answer them, I will answer them. And remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.